Someone has to pay for the water. No, that isn't a quote from your local utilities collection, but is the basis for the latest release from producers Bloomhouse and Atomic Monster. I'm talking about the haunted pool film, Night Swim. Released to moviegoers across the globe, Night Swim, I'm sure, had hoped to capitalize on the same success as Lights Out. What I mean is both Lights Out and Night Swim originally were acclaimed horror shorts before becoming feature-length films. Night Swim, both the horror short and theatrical film, feature a unique, haunting experience. Instead of the traditional haunted house, we are introduced to the concept of a haunted pool. Playing on the psychological fears of dark water and what could be lurking just below your feet. The original horror short by Rod Blackhurst and Bryce McGuire feature a woman swimming at night as she begins to see figures in the dark. Frightened, she attempts to get out, but before she can, is pulled under and vanishes. Certainly a cool concept for a short film, but could this be enough for a feature film and deliver a compelling story with a runtime of an hour and 38 minutes? The film's plot follows Ray Waller, a former baseball player forced into early retirement by a degenerative illness. Stumbling upon a fixer-upper suburban home with a spring water self-sustaining pool, it doesn't take long before the family begins to see Ray stronger and healthier than ever. They also start to see unexplainable figures in and around the pool. I can only imagine it would be the dream for any pool owner to have a self-sustaining spring that feeds their pool. No chemicals, minimal upkeep, and free water. Sounds too good to be true. As Ray's wife, Eve, tries to learn more about the previous tragedy surrounding their pool, Ray's behavior quickly changes as he becomes angrier and hyper-focused on the pool and himself. You may be thinking, haven't I seen that somewhere? And you'd be right. Night Swim seems to have washed, rinsed, and repeated the Amityville horror. I'm specifically talking about the one with Ryan Reynolds. Without much effort, you could swap Ray with Reynolds' character, George Lutz, and you wouldn't even notice. Both characters become obsessed with their real estate purchase and quickly descend into madness, all the while attacking their families. Sadly, Night Swim doesn't meet the hype created around this film. Things I found most disappointing were really the ghosts and storyline. No matter the caliber of acting, it wasn't going to save this flimsy and overdone haunting storyline, and changing out a haunted house for a pool didn't really work for a feature-length film. It wasn't surprising to me to see that as of the release of this review, Night Swim sits at a whopping score of 22% on Rotten Tomato. Despite its attempts to create jump scares, it was far too predictable and could have easily been rated PG despite some of the language. Even the most violent parts of the movie, the camera pans away, leaving much to the imagination of the viewer. And what about the ghosts, you may be asking? There was far too little, and what we do get to see was okay. They weren't exactly terrifying, but for the most part, the CGI creations did appear to have decayed a bit. Most of the scenes they were featured in were so dark, and with their black color tones, much of the detail was lost. When they were shown, it was so brief that whoever did the work on them must have been disappointed by their limited use. I would be curious to find out if that was on purpose or if someone decided going a similar way of the original Jaws and leaving it to the viewer's imagination was best. I hate to tell them, more ghosts and at least more visible time would have really helped bring some of the creep up in this movie. Despite the hype for this film, it really should have been left as a horror short as it had successfully played on the fears of water and the shadows in the dark. I give Night Swim a 2 out of 10. It has been released to streaming as of January 23rd, only 17 days after its theatrical release. Perhaps that was due to its lackluster opening of just 11.8 million, despite a budget of 15. Worldwide, Night Swim has pulled in a disappointing 36.9 million, certainly doesn't compare to 2022's Megan, also a PG-13 film, that earned Bloomhouse 181 million. Still interested in watching Night Swim? It is currently in theaters, but available on multiple streaming platforms, including Amazon, YouTube, Apple TV, Vudu, and Google Play Movies for about $20 plus tax. Do you agree with my review? Let me know down in the comments. And if you've seen Night Swim, what were your thoughts? Until next time, stay spooky and don't get scared. Bye!